Welcome to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. Thanks for all the likes and comments on the last video. If you would like to support this channel, please hit the like button and consider subscribing if you enjoy the content. And now let's start with the first story. It's called Get Out. I used to carry a toolkit for a large computer company. I'd fix computers, terminals, disk and tape and printers. One time I got called to a trucking company in North Carolina to work on a printer. This was a large band printer with paper in a continuous sheet. They'd do their trucking invoices and orders on it. It was really messed up and it took me forever to fix it. Other people had fixed it before and the customer was set off. I was young and just out of the marines. It was my first shot at fixing it. I finally got it working. I was just cleaning up and was about to tell the manager when he came in yelling at me. He told me to pack up my tools and get out. Now, in the meantime, no trucks are being dispatched. They would print the shipping documents on this thing. So I said nothing, packed up my tools and left. Two hours later, they get another repair person out there from our office. He does a test print, looks at the manager and tells him it's fixed and is working fine. He said the look on the manager's face was priceless. Be a jerk to a repair person just trying to do her job. Don't dispatch trucks for two hours because she just follows your orders and leaves. The next story is called Give me all you got. I was working at the Golden Arches at the time. We had our typical Saturday lunch rush. All five registers have a line of people and the drive through is around the building. I, the crew leader, have five people on the grill, one on fries, five up front at the tills, one in the back drive taking money, one in front drive taking orders and making drinks and a food runner for the front drive. This is over 20 years ago when Mac Archers had those giant food warming bins and it was made to order. We had a special clock with red and blue numbers above the warning bin that told us when to throw away the food. When the food came up, you looked at the clock, pulled the proper metal number and placed it behind the food that had just arrived. We could keep food in the bin for 15 minutes and then we had to waste it. It's the beginning of the lunch rush. I've got a full crew, a full bin of food and we are getting into a good groove. In walks the area mangler. He takes one look at my bin, goes back into the office and demands that I get written up for changing the time on the food. He and my manager walked up and started discussing this with me. I tried to explain to him that I wasn't changing anything and all the food in there had come up in the last 5 minutes as indicated by the time cards I had in there. He didn't believe me and said, there's no way you can get that much food that quickly and I'll prove it to you. And with that he proceeded to waste everything in my bin. And then he said, your customers are hungry, you need to get them food. I looked back in the grill and said, Kevin, give me everything you got. And he said, are you sure? I said. The area mangler just wasted the bin and you see the line of customers out here. And Kevin yelled, you got it. You see Kevin is a master in the grill. He was, at the time anyway, an overly hyped up teenager that was very good at what he did. He could outwork any three people in the grill. He was quick, accurate and loved a challenge. Well, Kevin being the person that he is started giving me food so fast that I was having trouble pulling it down and placing it and putting the right time cards on. I had the entire bin stacked with food within 5 or 6 minutes and asked the area manager if that was proof enough for him. He just grumbled and walked out. That was also the last time anyone doubted my timekeeping for food at that place, especially with Kevin running the grill. The third story is called Don't Check It Over. I worked for a screen printing company as a graphic designer. I did t-shirt designs mainly, but also did pretty much anything promotional. We did a lot of church stuff for all kinds of places all over the country. Whenever someone sent a bible verse in, I would double check to make sure it was correct. If it was not, I would send back options of kings or the others to see which one they wanted. After I had done this a lot of times, I got told to copy paste what customers gave as it was not my job to change it. So I did. A huge job comes in, like 600 shirts with 4 color print front and 1 color back. Pricey stuff. The artwork was sent in by the biggest church in town. I do the copy paste thing and set up the shirts, everything is approved and a week later the job is done. Then the church board comes in one day. I get called into the office. The back bible verse was wrong. I explain his rule to my boss in front of them and then tell them it was approved two times. 
Then the guy that approved it chimes in. I approved it over my phone, I could not see the back right. I just look at him and said, you approved our 2500 art based job over your phone and you want to blame me for your mistake? What kind of god fearing judge are you? I look at my boss and told him if he takes my pay for this job I'm rocking out and getting a lawyer. It states on the approval sheet to look over art very carefully. I rocked out and went to my desk. Shortly after a new rule came down that everything has to be checked by sales before going out. The last story is called Merry Christmas. I work in a hospital that has a union. For those who don't know, union jobs are great in terms of pay and benefits, but accountability is the shortcoming of being part of a union. I basically tell people a union is infinite get out of jail free cards for people who don't deserve the job they have. After two years of working at this job, I got a position where I kept the cafeteria clean and stocked on weekdays and worked dishwashing and patient tray line on weekends. Though my department is awesome now compared to when I first started there, for the longest time we had the most toxic and dramatic department. The collective catchphrase for everything in the department was, that's not my job. This is popular because the union will back anyone up who uses that phrase and requires each position to have a dedicated task list to make it fair. I do my best to be a hard worker and team player, be fair and go above and beyond my duties. However, when I feel I'm being taken advantage of, the catchphrase will kick in full swing for me. This one time on Christmas Eve I was working the dish room for the afternoon. I noticed a giant pan with a bunch of burnt on scrambled eggs on the sides and bottom which hasn't been soaked. I didn't think anything of it as the AM dishwasher is usually finishing up the breakfast stuff by the time I get there and figure they will get to it or have a plan for how to get it off easy. I do notice that my sink is full of oatmeal and noodles. This does annoy me since it's really not hard for them to just scrape the food into the trash before soaking instead of risking clogging the drains, which has happened before. The AM dish person washes all the cookware and service equipment while PM does the patient trays, plates, cups and bowls. Business as usual, so I think, an AM shift ends at 2.30 PM. My coworker decided to disappear before 2 until it was time to clock out leaving me by myself. I continue on and try to let it go and see that same pan of burnt egg just sitting in there. I get really set off and decided they are pushing it way too much with me today. Before I continue on with washing the dishes, I check the work schedule. I see that the same coworker who took advantage of me is scheduled to come in for the same shift the next day on Christmas and I decide it's time for a little malicious compliance. Since the breakfast dishes are the AM dish person's responsibility, it's pretty much not my job to wash the egg frosted pan. So I put the pan to the side and tell my coworkers not to touch it. When we close for the night, I put the pan back into the sink and just leave it without soaking it in water as an extra little gift. I was off the next day on Christmas. They found my present and were not pleased to put it nicely from what I heard. If you have ever tried to get burnt scrambled eggs off the sides of a pan, especially if it's set for a full 24 hours without soaking, then you will know that you would have an easier time separating two Legos super glued together. After that it was never an issue again and management had my back. And with that we end today's video. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories and today's video? I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and want to support me, 